73, let's get the business news now. Steph's got uh, some news now on house builders. Yes, Marty Tiboth. Uh, this is results out from Persimmon, one of the big house builders in the UK. And of course, lots of people wondering what the EU referendum result might mean for them. Morning, everyone. Yeah, like other property firms, Persimmon saw its share price fall off the back of the EU referendum result. Today, the firm has said it remains too soon to judge the effect that the result will have on the UK new homes market, but says it believes that market fund fundamentals remain strong. Well, with me now is Kate Faulkner, who is a property expert. Morning to you, Kate. Morning. So they had results out this morning. They said that the trading for the first half of the year has been strong. What did you make of the results? Well, they're absolutely right. We've had a phenomenal market for the first six months of the year. Um, bizarrely, we're kind of um, bereft this year with political changes affecting the property market. And the main reason it's been so strong is because we had the increase in stamp duty for second home buyers of 3% from the 1st of April. That meant we had the most phenomenal March that we've seen for donkey's years. Um, so we have seen a good uh, six months. We're also seeing quite a recovery from the recession. So you've got London, Cambridge, you've got Reading, double digit figures, growth at this moment in time. People very confident. And now we've got Brexit, and then the question is, right, what happens next? Mm. And interestingly, they say in their results that uh, they think it's too soon to judge the effect. And I think that's a lot of sectors are feeling that, aren't they? We just don't know yet what's going to happen. But what's the concerns for the sure. housing market? We, we kind of don't. But on the other hand, we've got a good 20 years of really good data now about housing. And when something like this happens, we know the first thing that people typically do is they'll go, I'll just hold off. Particularly as we're in the summer, they'll probably hold off and they'll probably go on holiday as buyers, if you like. Mm. So I think my sense is that people who are ab about to complete or had made an offer are going ahead. Um, so they're not panicking that much. Um, we know that um, people are still taking mortgages and they're still remortgaging. And so the market is still moving a week on. But we do know that demand will fall back. But that was actually predicted anyway. So you've got some markets that have kind of almost run out of steam growth wise, which is London, Cambridge, Reading, those areas. You've got areas like the Midlands that are maybe up sort of seven or eight percent. So we might see that growth fall back a little bit. Um, and then you've got areas like Newcastle and Liverpool still actually haven't recovered prices on average from 2008, not really going anywhere at this moment. So they may see some falls coming through. But the fundamentals are we have very little stock versus the population versus the demand. And the big thing to remember is actually the cost of buying because our mortgages are unbelievably low at this moment in time. So it's all about the cost of putting a roof over your head, renting versus buying versus maybe staying at home with mum and dad. Do you think this means anything for house prices then? Do you think we'll see any change there? If there is that uncertainty and a kind of pullback of people buying for a bit? Yeah, well, actually, that, that again, that was already predicted that we would see a softening of the market in the, in the second half of the year, um, certainly for the areas that have grown phenomenally, um, just because the affordability sort of um, ceiling, if you like, is starting to be hit in certain areas. So I think we will see that, but I think that was a natural effect that would have happened anyway. The big question is how quickly it will all bounce back and will areas like the Midlands, the North, will they start to see the kind of growth or anything like the growth that we've seen in the South or the South East or will it stunt it? And I think we're looking at a slowdown and a slowdown in growth at this moment in time where you see crashes and price falls is when you get credit crunch issues. So if we start seeing jobs disappearing, if we start seeing mortgage rates rise for whatever reason and the cost of buying rise, that's when we're going to start seeing the market to really stall and affect people's yeah. kind of daily lives. And at the moment, we're not seeing that. Our banks are very well, um, you'll know better than I, um, are much better set up than yeah. they were into the credit crunch as our developers as well, to be honest. Interesting. So much we could carry on talking about, Kate. Thank you very much for your time this morning. That's it for me. Steph, thank you very much. See you later. Thank you.